Hello YouTube, this is Marauders here and this is the Hori GameCube controller for the Nintendo Switch. So it's basically a Nintendo GameCube like uh, controller but uh, it's made for the Nintendo Switch. For those people who prefer this design, which most obviously is going to be the ones that would like to play uh, Smash Brothers Ultimate when it comes when it gets released this November uh, but is it is it good enough to be used for other things let's take a quick look okay let's talk about the physical appearance first so it looks like a GameCube original GameCube controller personally it's been I haven't touched a GameCube controller for a very very long time even when I did use the GameCube. I always use a wave bird. I didn't use a wire controller much. So I really can't remember can't don't know whether this thing actually feels like the good old GameCube controller or not. Okay? Now um from the look of it it looks like a GameCube controller. The sticks are actually made of the same rubber like material but of course the other things that were modded for the requirements of a modern day controller is that first of all the thumbsticks click in so of course that's an important thing of the current controllers and of course they are now um, a bumper and a trigger now if you're familiar with the previous Hori controller for the I think it's for the Wii U you you remember that they swapped the trigger and the bumpers so ZR is supposed to be a trigger, R is supposed to be the bumper on the controller, but on this GameCube controller, for some reason, they swapped it around. But it's okay because there's a way to actually flip this the, the assignment of these things when you use the controller. Other than that, there's not much to talk about. The, the side here, they textured the plastic so that there's some sort of like a grip, matte grip on it. Uh, I don't know how well it's actually gonna work, but it's probably to make it so it doesn't slip during when you're having it in a heated competition. Um, my main issue here is the D-pad, because I guess a lot of people they might think that this they might be getting this controller to try and play like platformers or something. This D-pad feels very stiff. It feels too stiff for my liking. I I tried it on games, it doesn't feel as good as it should be. Then as for the other buttons, there's actually a LED light here which we'll see turn on afterwards once I plug it in. And there's a turbo button to set the few turbo modes. Okay, uh, so that's it for physical. So let's plug it in and test it out. Okay, so here I am. I'm, I'm, I'm my switch here. I have the Hori dock with the USB port. So I'm going to just plug in the controller into the... USB Now I'm gonna go test the buttons Okay, so I mean it works as expected Now one thing I want you to see now is that so if I press here the bumper So it says ZR and the trigger it says R so that's basically the wrong way it's mixed up because if you look at a normal pro controller, okay, this is actually a bit dark to see, but uh, the bumper is actually R and the trigger is ZR. So this is flipped and uh, it would cause a lot of problems to people with their muscle memory and their familiarity of the buttons. So what you can do about this is that you disconnect the controller and then before plugging it in, you hold down both bumpers and then you plug it in. So I'm... And when you plug it in, notice that the light comes up this time. So this indicates that the bumper, the bumpers are now swapped. So now when I press the bumper, it's... Okay, I'm going to press a bunch of A's first. So now when I press the bumpers, it says R and the actual trigger body 
It says Zack R. So you are able to actually flip it around this time for more for more familiar uh, bumper trigger placement. Now let's talk about the little turbo button here. So if I press the turbo button and a button, so now this but so the button that you press the turbo button and the button together now has turbo capability. So I just hold it down and you can hear it click click click. So you can actually make it auto fire, which is by holding pressing the holding down the turbo button and the button again. So now the button automatically presses without you pressing it. And to stop it from, from firing, you just hold the button down. So I guess this is good in uh, arcade shooters or something. Then to turn it off, you hold down the turbo button and you press the button again. Now, there are a few rate of fires. So this is a normal, um, they say this is a five pushes a second. If you hold down the turbo button and you press up, you see it blink and you, you will now have 10 beats per second and you can push up one more time and now it's 20 per second so you can hold the button down and press down to slow it back down again okay so that's basically it and the other thing about doing this uh, trigger swap the, the good thing is you don't have to do it all the time when you're plugging it in. So once you do it once, if I disconnect it and put it back in again. So notice I'm not holding down triggers when I'm plugging in. And you can see that the lights come on and the, the triggers are still flipped. So that's that's nice. That's good. I mean, it would be it's very inconvenient. It would have been very inconvenient to just hold down the triggers and plug it in whenever you want to use it. But uh, they allow they allow this. It remembers, so that's great. So to turn that functionality off is the same thing. That's why I already disconnected it. I hold down the bumpers again and I plug it back in. And now the trigger is R and the bumper is ZR again. So okay, it, so at least that they corrected one of the main design issues. I, I'm not sure if the... I see people complaining about the Wii U version of this controller be, for of it being flipped. I'm not sure whether you could do this same thing with the Wii U one or not. Of course, the, the main question now is that so how well does this GameCube controller actually works when you're playing games? Uh, let's put it this way. The first thing is that the, the whole button assignment is basically wrong as a, as a Switch controller. Okay, so you need, your muscle memory needs to basically re-understand that A is actually this big button, B is this small one, and Y and X is basically just these, these two things that are these big huge things at, at the side which are very different and very inconvenient if you're playing any new games. So, I mean, the GameCube controller always had a weird button design. If your muscle reflexes, if your muscle memory can actually like adapt to this, to this weird button positioning, I guess that's fine. You can go ahead and get this to use it to play, uh, play normal Switch games instead of, well, maybe just using it for Smash. But the main issue that I have with that my, that uh, scenario is that the main reason that I got this controller to begin with was that I thought this D-pad would be better to use than let's say the Pro Controller Z-pad, which we know is a bit is a bit wonky and it doesn't work as well. But as I when I first started using it, this thing is so stiff. It's too stiff to. There's not much. Tra it, it feels spongy and uh, it feels flat. Like there's not much travel. I I I really don't like it. Maybe you might get used to it, but I personally don't like it. It's not really so. It maybe it detects the directions uh, better and there's less uh, mis inputs than the Pro Controller. But the the stiffness of the D-pad basically cancels out whatever advantage it has in the accuracy area so <laughs> if you want it just for the d-pad no this is not the correct d-pad thing to take yeah 
But other than that, if let's say you're just someone looking to maybe use this controller on the PC with how it be maybe on the for use on I don't know maybe an emulator, or if you're planning to just get this to use it for Smash, yeah maybe I guess if you're familiar with the GameCube controller that would be fine. Other than that, I don't see a reason why anyone who just plays normal Switch games and has no Nostalgic feel for a GameCube controller. I don't see why they would want to get this. Hmm. Oh well, I guess we all need to try our best to find a usable D-pad. Okay, so uh, this is Marauders, and uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Okay? I wonder what should I talk about next. Hmm. Bye. Now, before I end this uh, review, I have there's one more very interesting feature that this controller has. Now, this controller is actually X input capable when you plug it into the PC. But if you've used uh, any other USB controller like a Nintendo controller, Pro controller on your PC when it with it to emulate X input, you will remember that the Nintendo controllers are uh, A B X Y is different from an Xbox controller's A, B, X, Y position. So namely, which is like the Xbox's A is like at the bottom, B is on the right, and X is on the left, and Y is on top. So it's flipped around for between the Nintendo and the Xbox controllers. So usually when you use this, when you use controllers like this, uh, it's a bit, uh, you get a bit confused with, because the buttons you need to push are labeled differently from the actual buttons that you push. So that would mean that if this was normal, that would mean that this would become the B button. If you in X input mode, this would be B and this would be A. But Hori did a very nice gesture, which is that when you plug this thing into the PC, this is A in X input. This is A, this is B, this is Y, this is X. So that's great. And uh, this, is, this is RB and this is the RT. So Hori actually made it um, somewhat easy to understand and use use this uh, controller on your PC. So at least you can still see the buttons and use it. <laughs>